but by far the most famous ghost to haunt this beautiful area is the white Cistercian monk. His favourite haunt, if you'll excuse the pun, is indeed our next location, which is the De Lacey Arms Public House. Here we are outside the De Lacey Arms, one of the most famous public houses in the whole of Worley. The first public house was called the Shoulder of Mutton, then in 1925 renamed the De Lacey Arms after Henry De Lacey who built Clitheroe Castle after the Norman Conquest of 1066. Now then, the De Lacey Arms has a ghost. Now the De Lacey Arms has a whole catalogue of ghostly events. Let's now turn the clock back to a bitterly cold Saturday night way back in 1997. The landlord Tony was working very, very hard behind the bar and to his horror, all his beer pumps ran dry. He rushed down to the cellar and found that someone had disconnected all the barrels. He went into the cellar for the third time that night to reconnect the pipes. He suddenly became aware of a humming noise. He looked up and there to his horror, he saw a monk in a white habit walking slowly towards him. He screamed in terror rushed upstairs to the snug bar and to this area where I'm sitting now he found three elderly regulars. He told them what had happened, they laughed. Don't worry, you've just seen the Cistercian monk. He's been haunting this building for years. Christmas 2001. The family were enjoying their Christmas lunch. They had all the Christmas cards given by uh, regulars and uh, relatives pinned behind the bar with blue tack. All of a sudden, the family looked up in amazement to see each card flicked off the wall by an invisible hand. Of course, every family deserves a holiday. And Tony and his wife and children went to Ibiza in 2004. They, of course, contacted the brewery and the brewery sent a relief manager, a young lad from the city of Liverpool. Tony informed him, don't worry, the building's haunted, but don't worry, he won't harm you. He's a ghostly monk. Sorry, mate, I don't believe in ghosts, said this young lad. In the early hours of the morning, his two Alsatian dogs that had accompanied him from Liverpool started barking almost hysterically. He opened his eyes and there at the end of the bed was our ghostly Cistercian monk. He shouted, no, don't hurt me, don't hurt me, the Bosch is coming back next week, don't hurt me. With that, the figure slowly materialised and vaporised at the same time. The following morning, he had his bags packed and couldn't wait to see the liver buildings once again. Now we're joined with the present landlady, Jan Taylor. Jan, it's a pleasure to see you. Pleasure it must be fantastic running this pub, but you must also be very, very aware of its ghostly past. Oh, I certainly am, yes. Have you had any experiences? Well, we have. I have had quite a few experiences with ghosts, yes. And what exactly have you seen, Jan? Mainly, um, we've seen an old man that sits in the corner down here just behind you. Uh, he tends to sit and smoke his pipe. We've seen an old lady who tends to wander in and out of the ladies' uh, toilets. And the main one upstairs that we see in our living quarters is a, a small girl who's about seven or eight years old. We've seen her quite a few times. She's quite a mischievous character. Yeah, the De Lacey Arms has this fantastic reputation of being Worley's most haunted pub. Yes. Do you get lots of people coming here to, to hear stories of the ghosts? We often get people asking about it, yes, and all the history that's behind uh, the De Lacey itself. Fascinating. And behind the pub you've got the old charnel house. Yes. And I believe that uh, way back in the 1860s, a family from Scotland made their way through the Ribble Valley. They were not given any, any help of the local people. They were shown the door from the Swan Hotel and so. indeed the, the Bluebell and they froze to death and I'm told their bodies were brought here to the very very back of the De Lacey and yes, I believe that. I'm told they disappeared. They did. Yeah, I wonder if there's any, any um, ghostly relations with them. ...that one of the customers took from out the back of the beer garden. Right. It was just a few friends and behind them was three figures. Absolutely amazing. So do you enjoy working here? 
I do. I love yeah. working here, yes. I mean, Warley does have a good atmosphere, doesn't it, really? But so yes. running a pub like this must be fantastic. Oh, it, yes. Warley's a mainstream tourism village, isn't it, Definitely, really? definitely. It has a wonderful atmosphere. You know, the characters that we get in here, old and young, you know, we get a big mix of, uh, of customers and they all more or less come from Warley and, and know all the history behind it. We do get a lot of visitors as well. Um, a lot come, especially to see the painting. We had a family last week that came from, all the way from Australia because they were called De Lacey. And they'd heard about this painting, so they wanted to see uh, the painting that was on the wall. Yeah. And the painting's right here, Janet. It is, yes. And that's Henry De Lacey, that's named Henry after De Lacey. the famous De Lacey Arms. Yes. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Jan. You're welcome. Here we are behind the De Lacey Arms. This building behind me is called the Charnel House. A crude post-mortem would take place and then you'd be interned here at Worley Churchyard. In the bitterly cold winter of 1854, three Scottish people found themselves walking from the Hopfields of Kent back home to Scotland. They came here to Worley and they knocked on the door of the Swan Hotel and were shown the door. They knocked on the door of the De Lacey Arms and were shown the door and then they went to the Bluebell public house and were shown the door. It said they made their way to the centre of Worley, huddled together, and they froze to death. Their three frozen bodies were then brought to the charnel house for a post-mortem that would take place the following day. The following morning, the mortician made his way down to the charnel house to perform the post-mortems. As he entered the charnel house, he was horrified to find that all three bodies had disappeared. They had either defrosted very quickly and gone back to Scotland, or someone had stolen the bodies. What we do know is that year, some four bodies disappeared from Rishton Churchyard, from Blackburn Churchyard, and from Nelson and Cone. Who knows, in this area, there could have been the Ribble Valley's version of Burke and Hare.